Okay, so we're recording the CS2510 week 8 lecture 1. As I promised, today is going to be the last lecture. So today we're going to cover uh, public versus private, okay? Access, if you will. Uh, inheritance, and a little bit about recursion. Uh, so let's see. Today, number, uh, today is going to be the last lecture. Today will be last lecture. So office hours starting tomorrow. Now your project, let's see if my beautiful, yeah, it's crashed. Too bad. So your project uh, will be blackjack, or is blackjack, right? So I have basically, let's see, close that, oh, awesome. You look at the project. Uh, hopefully, it opens up pretty quickly. Eh, slow. Okay, so project is blackjack. I have uh, one team of two people, right? So that's fine. If you can work on it individually, it's not. It's not too difficult individually. It's up to you. So the main thing is. Like I said, uh, start on the project early. Start early. So ideally, well, start early by tomorrow. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, by end of lecture today. So start on it. Um, no. And the ideally, what you will do is you'll use the lecture time, that is office hours, to work on it, definitely, and outside of class. So if you work on it. Um, Consistently, it's not difficult. Right? I mean, you got to really think about it as you work on the project. Let's see. It's still not loading up, so let me just save it. And hopefully, uh, desktop, yes. Save. Oh, where exists. Oops, wrong one. That's why. Project. Oh, yeah, I have all the necessary files in the project folder. Okay. So under the CS2510 course materials. And I also have a lot of um, references for MATLAB under the lecture notes and videos. So you should look up a lot of code. Like I said, you should start working on the project ASAP. But let's take a look. There. So one of the first things you should do is you should understand this hierarchy. All right, so do a lot of writing on a piece of paper before you start typing away. The worst thing you can do is just start typing without having an idea for how to attack the problem, right? And if you do that, you're not going to finish this. Because it is, after all, a project. And uh, let's see, blah, blah, blah. OK, <laughs> completing this project will solidify your understanding of object-oriented programming and give you practicing and developing and testing code incrementally, all right? So that's the key word. So in other words, this project combines both MATLAB and OO, which is the purpose of this course. OK, start early, ideally by end of lecture today. Um, let's see what else I got. So note that your exam two is n next week's, is in lab next week. So it's week nine, OK? So this week in lab, you'll continue work on the project. OK, so recall that we we're working with the polynomial class, working with the polynomial class. OK? Now, one of the things about OOP, the con concept behind OOP is, uh, so this is where we started. We started with overloading, where we defined the subtraction operator on the polynomial class. But today, we'll talk about private, public, and inheritance. Okay? These slides refer to the interval class that I have online. So again, you should look up, um, and you go to the CS2510 website, the sources for OOP slides. I have all this code. Again, it's from Cornell University. So I have the interval class. So look at it. Right? I mean, go understand it. I'm doing polynomial class in lecture to be different. So you have, I mean, you have more examples. Right? OK. So what are the fundamental ideas behind OOP? Aggregate variable methods into an abstraction that makes the relationship to one another explicit. Right? So I want to review the big ideas behind OOP. Objects 
are self-governing. That is, they protect and manage themselves. We haven't talked about protection yet. We'll talk about it. Uh, high details from client and restrict clients use of the services. So that's the thing we're going to uh, talk about shortly. So you want to restrict access to properties and methods. So you don't you don't want any like um, random method modifying data inside the class. So to do that, so in other words, information hiding is very important in large large projects. That's the point. So MATLAB and OOP languages provide um, met provide syntax, if you will, to implement protection, and this is how you do it. Uh, so what I've done is I've restricted access to the polynomial property, <laughs> both in uh, to clients, if you will, outside the class. All right. So nothing outside the class can set this variable, nor can it get this variable. All right. If you want to set and get at the same time, you can say access equals private. Instead of set access equals private, get access equals private. The default is public. Okay. Now, that's point number one. Point number two is in order to access this variable, you can you implement what is called as a public get method. All right. So notice the syntax again. The syntax, uh, any method other than the constructors, for the argument of any method other than the constructors, the first argument, sorry, should be a reference to the object itself. So the way I access this polynomial variable is through this um, by utilizing this object. You see that? So if you want to do a look at an example, so if you do P1. modify but let's save it so p1 equals polynomial class of 1 pi 3 yes okay and if I do p1 dot polynomial I'll get an error okay now recall that last lecture I was able to do this so display dot polynomial that works however I want to point out that this is how you should start do um, designing classes from now that is you should use private public access make all properties private okay you don't want to uh, and I'll talk about protected right protected is when so there's public private protected right public means anybody can access it. private means no one can access it. protected means s any subclass can access it all right yeah so that's all it is and those definitions are in the slides here okay let me just jump to inheritance uh, so public uh, client has access. This is a default access, by the way. Private client cannot access, but there's also protected. Right? Uh, let's see. Uh, but before you get into protected, an important rule of thumb which you should follow from now is you should always use available methods even within the same class. What does that mean? So if you go in here, except the constructor, notice what I have done with the self, I mean the display method, all right? Again, any method other than the constructor must have a reference to the object itself as the first argument, right? But I have not done self dot polynomial. You see that? I've done self dot get. Okay. Same thing here for the plus and the minus. You see that? It's a pro oop uh, practice, if you will, to do this. Yeah. Instead of self. Uh, no, because, I mean, well, actually, you, you might be able to, but this is not, mm, let's see, oops, um, get dot p1, let's try this. <coughs> let's see, there is a recommended style to do this. Let's, uh, here, this is one, okay? Yes, you can, uh, let's see if it will work, but this is more, um, it's better because this syntax tells you that this method is in, it belongs to and this object P, that's why. This you people can confuse with function calls, as you will see when we define recursion, right? Well, you don't have to see through recursion, but 
It's better here because this shows that this isn method belongs to this object. That's why. Let's see if this will work. It should work, but um, let's clear everything. Okay. P2 is arc. Instead of doing this, I can just type this. Uh, P3 equals P1 plus P2. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. It's a good point, but it's not recommended. So it's not recommended means you should do it. That's what it means. Right. Okay. So this is the get method from self, right? And notice you can obviously access the get method because here I have not set any access restrictions and the default is public. Okay. You can explicitly set it to public if you want, but it's not necessary. Is that clear? What is the difference between what? Uh, what's the difference between the, the get method and the property? <coughs> no, the get method provides explicit access to the, your uh, private properties. You can't access uh, this polynomial outside the class. Okay? That's what the get method is there for. That's point number one. Point number two is it's good practice to utilize the get method even within member functions, okay, methods. So they're actually like um, independent of each other. That is using the get method here and defining a get method. Is that clear? Yeah. So for example, okay, maybe this will be clear. It's a good question. So let's clear this. Uh, P1 polynomial cannot, that won't work. That'll work. How's that? Okay? You notice a subtle difference between the get method and this. This is a very good question which Ron asked. You see that? Okay? This is direct access to the property. Okay? This is like a formatted display because of the disp method. Is that clear? Because we are calling pretty inside disp. Is that clear, Ron? Or are you still confused about it? I guess what are you confused about? Like this is just a, this is just practice, okay? In the sense making um, access private. Right. It's it called information hiding. Why am I doing it as private? Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, it's a good practice to not let external like clients corrupt your data that's all so then <coughs> let's see so this is with respect to the get method and then of course you can define a public set method i'm not going to do that just do it yourself as practice now when i post the final code online it'll have this completed set method but don't look at it right in the sense until you can do it yourself a public set method okay so this is information hiding that's the concept behind it Ron it's good practice for large projects point number one now another big idea behind OOP is what is called inheritance all right that is so working with polynomial class so public versus private access how about this uh, is information hiding is what is called is the standard programming practice. I mean, it's not only the standard, it's the standard OOP. It's not only OOP, it's programming practice for large projects in order to avoid unnecessary corruption of internal data. Okay? But OOP just provides a nice mechanism to implement public versus private access. That's all. Okay, so it's called information hiding. Now, inheritance uh, basically defines an is a relationship. Okay, and going back to your project, so as a hint, this is probably the most important figure in your project. Okay, so how you got to think yourself for here? You see this? Player is a person. 
dealer is a person. Okay? So these two classes are going to be children of, not childs, right? So it's children of the person class. In the sense it's, you know, you can ask yourself, should I do this? Well, it's a very natural thing to do, right? And as you will do this project, you'll realize that it leads to better code if you do it right. That's why you really have to think about this on a piece of paper before you start coding, right? So anyway, so what we are going to do is we're going to define the Chebyshev polynomials. Chebyshev polynomial is a polynomial, okay? That's what we're going to do. Example. And if you look at the slides, so the slide uses the example of a fair die and a trick die, okay? But you can look through this. This is the bottom line, right? Inheritance relationships are shown in a class diagram with the arrow pointing to the parent class. So die inherits from handle, just like <laughs> polynomial inherits from handle, right? Then our Chebyshev polynomial will inherit from polynomial, okay? Because the point is, you don't have to, uh, as you will see, we will call the constructor method of the polynomial class. Okay, because the Chebyshev polynomial is a polynomial. Why do you want to redefine some of the methods? <coughs> so again, uh, inheritance defines is a relationship. Multiple inheritance means you can have multiple parents. For example, MATLAB. A single inheritance, you can have only one parent. Example, Java. Right? So MATLAB supports multiple inheritance So these are some obvious terms, right? Existing class is called parent class. Uh, derived class is called child class, right? Now, something about inheritance, and this is what I'm going to demonstrate. You obviously, when you inherit from a parent, right, you should call the constructor of the parent class, okay? Because you want to instantiate the object first. Uh, the parent object, and I've done that here. So let's look at it. Right? This syntax is, you have to practice this to get used to this. So here it is. Right? Class definition, Chebyshev, is a child of the polynomial class. Right? This syntax is very similar to uh, any class inheriting from the handle class. Right? I've, there are different kinds of Chebyshev polynomials. I want to define Chebyshev polynomial of the first kind. Right? And if you, the wiki is pretty accurate on it. So here it is. Right? Now, Something important, I'm going to just demonstrate how to do this inheritance, right? Uh, what you should do is you should really, this is, should be, this is your like mini homework assignment. You should figure out how to actually implement this using OOP. Right? I'm going to do this, I'm going to post this online later today. But try this, okay? because this involves recursion. So t0 of x is 1, t1 of x is x, and then tn plus 1 of x is like this. Right? this is, I mean, this is how it's defined. So again, what you should do is you take a piece of paper and understand what this definition means, first of all. Right? Do some examples. And then you should think about, as you define the child class, how are you going to implement this recursive definition? Oops. Okay. What I mean by how you're going to implement is, are you going to call the constructor recursively? Can you even do that if you think about it? Or is the constructor going to have a private method, all right, that is recursive? Makes sense? So these are, again, these are not so obvious things you can think about as you're sitting in front of a computer. You should take a piece of paper and do this. Right? I'll post the solution online. That is the way I do it. So again, practice, okay? But anyway, let's just look at how you define a constructor. Well, it's of a child. It's, very, it's the same syntax as for any class. That is, the name of the constructor has, is the same name as the class. But now the constructor has two arguments. So the, sec the, the second argument is, remember, well, the second argument is basically an instance let me just show you the slide. Here. So the second argument is not an instance, sorry. The second argument is passed to the parent class. Okay? And the it's not a confusing thing. The syntax, the way it works is to 
call a method from the parent class, you use this at operator, right? So notice that going back here, this Chebby Poly first, I'm sorry, this OBJ is a handle to an instance of the child class, okay? So if you want, you can define this like this, Chebby Shave uh, Child OBJ, okay, or object. Yeah, let's be more specific. This should make more sense. Because again, nothing changes with respect to what we learned last week. That is, the constructor returns a handle to an instance of the class, yes? But now what I'm doing is I'm calling the uh, method from the parent class where are this handle by using the at operator, okay? And of course, I have to change all this. So let me change that. All right? So uh, let me call let me, T1 is, I believe, the Chebyshev polynomial of the first kind is simply x. So let's look at that. It's, sorry, T1 of x, which is Chebyshev polynomial of the first kind, is x. Right. So T1 of x is x. So T1 is Chebby. This is called Chebyshev. Chebyshev. Okay, so 1, 0, okay, comma, 1, 0, all right. Uh, that has been changed, okay. So T1 has been defined as x, all right, but I've ch what change did I do in the polynomial class? I didn't change anything. Okay, save. Save. Let's try this again. Clear. Okay. All right? So now if you look, what I can, whoops. External mouse. External mouse. So let me ask you some questions. Can I do this? Will I get an error? But have I set it as private? No. Let's see, I have not set it as private. So what's the default access? Public. So can I do it? <coughs> yes. OK? So notice it has stored. I mean, I, this is just a demonstration, all right? It is storing it as double of the way because of the way I did it. Now, how do I access? So this is, this is a question to think about. Can I access the polynomial object, okay, of the parent class of T1? Can I do that? You understand the question? So can I access this? Directly, can I do that? <laughs> Why not? <coughs> it's private, right? Okay, so again, you should practice this. I'll uh, post the solution. So what you should do next is you should figure out how to act properly instantiate a Chebyshev polynomial recursively. I'll post the solution online, but think about it. Right? It's not easy. Like, you have to really think about it, number one. Uh, number two, the last topic for um, this course is recursion. And my favorite example is factorial, so let's look at that. So recursion, it's an, um, and uh, let's see. Basically, you're defining recurrence relations, okay? Elegant way to implement uh, some ideas, if you will. For example, right, let's look at the factorial function. Right? This is my it's not only mine, it's a favorite example of a lot of folks. Okay, so let's implement the factorial function recursively in uh, MATLAB. So how do we do that? Let me close my fact. So first of all, what's the factorial function? So what is n factorial? How is it defined as? All the way to 1. Okay, oops. All right. So those of you in my 2900, we talked about recursion in hardware. 
but how would you implement this? Just give me the pseudocode. So let's say I have a function, let's call it my fact, because there is a factorial function in MATLAB. So I do my fact of 5. Uh, but by the way, 5 factorial is 120. Okay. 5 factorial is 5 times times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Yes? 60, 120. Okay? So let's say I do my fact of 5. Like how do I do this? So think recursively. That is, you're going to, I mean, it's so obvious that it's kind of pointless to explain it, but think, how do I do this? So it's 5 times what? It's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, but algorithmically, pseudocode. So here is recursive pseudo, and we'll do this in MATLAB, pseudocode. Okay. <coughs> it's not true code. 5 times what? For those of you who were in my 2900, you should be able to tell me what this is. <coughs> five times? Four. Four, yeah, but, t no, yeah, it's five times four, but tell me, I want it to be recursive. I want to I want this to be in terms of my fact. My fact of? Yes, my fact of four, yes? Then what, five times? Keep going. Yes. Keep going. So my fact three times two times. And you'll see why I'm doing this. My fact of one. Yeah. Wait, I'm missing something. Ah, that's why. I mean, it should be very elegant there. See, it's five, four, three. Do you see how elegant it is? Five times four times three times two times my fact of one. Yes. Then what? No, is it? Be careful of the base case. So we're basically looking at what is the base case. That's, if any, uh, elegant way to implement ideas, uh, the trick is to understand what the base case is. Okay? You should always have a base case. If not, your recursive algorithm will not terminate. So is the base case one? That's the question. Is it? Not technically. So tell it technically what it is. What is the base case? Uh, zero. Okay, so my fact of zero. So now what you should return. So you've gone to zero, yes? So what should you return now? This is the base case. Should you return zero? No. So what should you return? <coughs> but correct. But what should my fact return? My, sorry, my fact of zero. What should it return? One. One, exactly. So. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, okay? So this is the base case. Okay. Uh, my fact of 0 is the base case returns 1, okay? So what happens is, the beauty about recursion is these calls to my fact are pushed onto a stack, okay? So last in is the first out. So now, so all these calls, all these calls gets pushed onto a stack, and then as you return up, calls get popped out of the stack, right? Push and pop. So is, is the recursion really elegant in terms of space? No, it, it occupies a lot of space, right, in memory. But it's a very nice way, it's a very elegant way to implement, uh, let's see, let's call this result, my fact of number, okay, remember, by default it's double, right? And completing my previous sentence, just overwrite my fact. Uh, recursion is elegant way to implement a lot of ideas. Okay? It's not only related to like mathematical functions. So recursive, imp uh, I can't spell. recursive implementation, implementation of factorial. Okay. So I'll, if you want, try to implement this using a loop. Okay. I mean, actually, factorial is a bad example. Factorial is pretty easy to do using a loop. A good example is Fibonacci numbers, right? They're, they're very easy to do recursively because I, it's just very natural. But then let's look at this. If number equals zero, okay, base case. I mean, this is MATLAB syntax, okay? I was a little caught up on this. Just result equals one. 
okay else what result equals yeah that's it okay so and then I don't know it is f print f percent f oops already forgot uh, result let's try this my fact of zero okay one that's the base case if you don't have a base case you will crash the program right it will run out of memory okay so again you can see that uh, let's see because of the way I did well it's actually good I did this Notice how <coughs> there is a this is good I did the f print f. So you see how the call is. You notice the or what do you notice about this? There's something here that you should notice. So th this is you first of all you understand all these numbers are coming because of the f print f, right? I'll take out the f print f and you'll see they won't show up. What do you notice about this? Yeah, it's called six times because of the base case. But what it has something to do with what I was talking about here. So in other words, what's what number is getting displayed first? Sorry, my fact zero, right? So this is a call stack. So it's now this is how the returns are the function is returning the base case before one before that one before that one before that one before that right so it's last in first out it's interesting so I don't have to print it okay let's do that <coughs> okay all right so we're done with the course so what you should do is write I mean we start working on the project, right? Take a piece of paper, understand it. I have like, uh, for example, if you go to the project folder. Or, no. Uh, so the S2510 project. Uh, print out all these M files, right? Hopefully I can open it. Well, this is Internet Explorer, so it sucks. So there's, uh, there's no, uh, it doesn't look at my, it doesn't see my carriage returns, whatever, right? Uh, so hopefully I'll put, okay. So print out all these files. Make sure you understand how the files work, right? This will probably take you like an hour. I don't know how long. So understand that first. Then you start writing on a piece of paper some ideas, right? On towards like solutions to different part of the projects, to different part of the project. Okay. Yeah. So work on the start working on the project okay, if uh, you have like um, whatever deadline I set you you have some time to do it but don't work on it even like a week before it's due it will probably be too much okay. so when is it due Friday of week 10 right it's 17th of May 5 p.m. CST by email there's no reports or anything like that okay so basically details of files to be emailed below uh, so one set per group these are the files I need okay so ideally zip them up in one folder with your uh, group member names or whatever and then email it to you. So zipping up a folder is really simple in Windows. You should right click, 7-zip. If you don't have 7-zip, you can download it. You should be on your laptop. So add to, blah, and then just email that to me. Okay. All right, so we're done. So starting tomorrow, I'll be here just uh, having office hours. So please start working on the project as soon as possible and we are done.